why is the boiling point of fluorine so low? Well, fluorine is a molecule, as in it's two fluorines bonded together and that's it. It's not an ionic compound, which is made between a metal and a non-metal. What causes molecules to stick together? The answer is intermolecular forces. And there are three of them that you're going to need to know about. The strongest is called hydrogen bonding. This occurs when you have hydrogen bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, sometimes chlorine. We don't even have hydrogen here. So fluorine does not have hydrogen bonding between its molecules. The next strongest intermolecular force that could make these molecules stick together is called dipole-dipole forces. This force only occurs between polar molecules. Let me draw you the Lewis structure for fluorine, F with a single bond to another F and three lone pairs around each one. These two Fs are the same, I mean, they're not exactly the same atom, but they have the same electronegativity because they're both fluorines. The difference in electronegativity is zero and it's a symmetrical molecule. This is a very non-polar molecule, and so it does not have dipole-dipole forces either. The other intermolecular force that you're probably responsible for is called London dispersion forces. All molecules have London dispersion forces, and in general, bigger molecules have stronger London dispersion forces. The stronger the intermolecular forces between molecules, the higher the boiling point, because stronger intermolecular forces make the molecules stick together, and then it takes more energy to break them apart. So let's talk more about fluorine, and let's compare it to a molecule that's almost exactly the same, like bromine. Br2 has the same single bond between the two and three lone pairs around each one. But bromine is much larger. It's farther down on the periodic table. London dispersion forces are very temporary dipoles that occur when the electrons that make up the molecule just happen by chance to be distributed more on one side than the other. These electrons you can think of as moving freely around the molecule. And there might just be like one moment where it feels like more of the electrons are on one side than the other. That would give one side a delta minus and one side a delta plus, like a very slight minus side and a very slight plus side. And then if it encounters another molecule that's undergoing the same thing, that plus side and minus side might be a little attracted to each other. Fluorine, with its tiny atoms, is much less likely to have an imbalance of electrons on one side or another compared to bromine, which is much larger. The electrons in the valence shell of bromine are way farther away from the nucleus which is the positive charge holding the electrons there in the first place, which means those electrons have more freedom to move around in general. Bromine is more likely to have a slight imbalance of electrons on one side or the other due to its size. So that means that bromine has stronger London dispersion forces and probably a higher boiling point than fluorine, whose electrons do not have as much freedom because they are closer to the nuclei of the atoms because it's a smaller atom. And so the London dispersion forces between fluorine molecules is even weaker. Smaller obviously equals weaker if bigger molecules have stronger London dispersion forces. So the answer your teacher wants to hear is that fluorine molecules only are attracted to each other by London dispersion forces. 
and fluorine F2, the molecule itself, is so small that the London dispersion forces themselves are actually pretty weak. This means that the molecules don't have much attraction to each other, and so it takes hardly any energy to break them apart, and that's why the boiling point is low. Congratulations, you can explain it now. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.